talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. Hey, everybody. It is Wednesday, July the 15th. I'm Emerson Collins. And I'm Del Shores. And you're listening to The, the Dell and, and Emerson, Emerson Show. Show. Straight talk. Real guy. This week's episode of The Dell and Emerson Show is brought to you by Equality Vodka. Oh, my gosh. It's such a stressful day, y'all. Full disclosure, we are pre-taping the show like two hours in advance, so it's not like a fancy pre-tape, but Lord has it thrown the day off. Oh, it's hard. It's just so hard. I got a flight to catch. I know, because we're doing really exciting things. Yes, we're both going to Texas. I'm, I'm going a little bit earlier than you, and we are having some fun events there where we are hoping to get to the budget that we need to greenlight a very sordid wedding. We're having two events, one in Fort Worth and one in Dallas. And if you would like to attend and you, you're th that kind of investor person, uh, go to our Facebook and there will be some information on that. And while I'm there, I'm going to perform two marriages, one in Fort Worth and one in Dallas. That's and how I'll, exciting. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to all. And then I'm going to go to Birmingham after that and perform another one. So I want to give a shout out to Marcus and Bill 22 years they've been together, finally Woohoo! getting to get married in the Lone Star State. And then Kelly and Sandy, 21 years together, are going to get married in Fort Worth on Monday night. And then Lisa and Rebecca in Birmingham have been together 15 years. So, yes. I, I love that it's two-thirds lesbian weddings that it's you're th doing. I know it. It's cr kind of crazy. It's good. That just, I'm, just breaking boundaries. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just, uh, the, the lesbians love me too. So, it's, But, yes, yeah, so we will be in Dallas and Fort Worth this weekend, and that's why we're taping the show. And we had a very exciting day today because we already got a new investor for the movie, right? And we're 80% to our Green light. Yes, green light. So, yes. Um, Woohoo. All right. Well, so, and here in L.A., it's been a really big uh, week. Uh, the Outfest LGBT Film Festival is going on. It started last Thursday night. Is it uh, the largest in the world, the the gay, gay and lesbian? Do you know this? I don't. I should have done my research. I think it this is. This is my favorite thing in the world when he asks a question about something that I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I know. I don't know. And he he's very honest. He doesn't make, uh, You know, if it were Leslie Jordan, he'd make it up. The uh, I think between Frameline and Outfest, it, they, there's 166 films, I believe, this year. And I saw a couple. Yeah, I did, too. I was there opening night for TIG, which is uh, a documentary that's a little bit scripted. Uh, so they're, they're, they sort of recreated some things that had already happened, I think, when they decided to make it. But it was excellent. I love her comedy. And it, it, it was about her journey through cancer and how cancer can kind of be funny. and, and Cancer's just, hilarious. It just, well, it, 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 in a odd way once she embraced it in her stand-up it ignited her career to a degree that it, it she, she's had a crazy career since that's great so it, i really enjoyed it and got to um hang out with a lot of good people and our good friend alonzo duraldi was there and who is our our, our programmer that we love yes and what'd uh, you see i saw on saturday morning i went to see the boys shorts now that's not to be confused with just short shorts like the boys wear uh it's boys or short, short boys. films <clears throat> Uh, because uh, friends of our show that have all been on, uh, Drew Drogi, Sam Pancake, Justin Martindale, are a part of a web series called Not Looking that was inspired off the Looking HBO series, but really has nothing to do with it. It's a uh, high hysterical comedy. It's coming out, I believe, August 23rd. Second um, season coming out, right? Yes. Yeah. And that was hysterical, and the shorts were great. Uh, and then on Saturday night, I went to see the Tab Hunter documentary. Now, I was not familiar with him particularly. Like, I sort of heard the name. But basically, Tab Hunter was like the original Channing Tatum, is what I've decided. Yeah, and, and, and our good friend who is going to be on our show, we didn't even announce our guest, Blake MacGyver, is a huge fan, right? So yeah. he, he, he loves him, and he's, he's interesting to me. I want to talk to him about that, because he likes all the retro things. Like it, I, I'm always, when I talk to, to, to Blake, he's always like an old soul. When I talk to you, it's like you go, who, who is that? I don't know who that is. Well, but the documentary was really interesting, because it was done by Jeffrey Schwartz the same guy that did I Am Divine, and he has a very special gift for making documentary subjects incredibly compelling. It's not just talking heads and sort of like if you love the material, you'll love it, and if you don't know it, you don't, uh, you won't enjoy it, because I didn't know anything about him, and I found it amazingly fascinating. His producer husband was there in, in it. They've been together for 30 years. Tab -tab Hunter's husband? Yes, and... Uh, but they talked about his early relationships as well while he was a part of the studio system. So it was just really fascinating. He was sort of the original male blonde bombshell. He was in that kind of Rock Hudson era where yes. there was lots of closeted. Did they did they address Rock Hudson and some of the other ones in the documentary? I mean, in past, like right. it's not about their 
they're not part of. He didn't date them or anything. According, I to would this documentary. really like to see that. I think I, it, it sounds uh, amazing. To me. But it was great, and it's ongoing uh, through the weekend. And there's some uh, awesome things uh, coming up in it. If you're here in LA, you should check out. Yeah, uh, the, you go see Out to Win. It, the, it's a the documentary centerpiece, and uh, that's NFL legend Dave Copay and basketball star uh, Jason Collins. I know him. You know, yeah. no, not like personally. I just know the name. You know, well, because you love the sports. Ball. It's a sports ball documentary, but he's the gay basketball player. Yes, he is. And the, with 54, the director's cut, is at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. And I love seeing movies at that cemetery. It's great. Well, and the director's cut just means they put that, like, gay kiss and stuff back in. So everybody should go see it. it, it it's supposedly. And I think they re refurbished uh, the movie. They it, That's what I was saying. I was talking to the director, actually, at, at one of the Outfest parties. And he's very proud of this. So go see that. And then the closing night is The New Girlfriend. That's on Sunday night. Sexy, unpredictable thriller from great French director. Or Francois um, the swimming pool. He did swimming pool in eight women, and it's at the newly reopened historic Ace Hotel downtown. For tickets so, and info, you can check out outfest.org. And obviously, lots of you guys are not in LA, uh, but LGBT film festivals are really the way that we get our work and art out there. Um, and it's uh, we're really getting into the high season of the festival. So uh, check out whatever major city is near you. I promise you, they have some kind of LGBT film festival. So just put in your city and gay film festival, LGBT film festival online. Check it out and go support. LGBT film and filmmakers. Yeah, and it's a good place to meet people other than, you know, Grindr or the whatever. Right. Or um, a bar. All right. And our equality update is brought to you by Equality Vodka. Yes, and thank you, Equality Vodka, for sponsoring the Dell and Emerson show. Equality Vodka is an ultra premium vodka brand with one agenda equality for all. Support our LGBT communities by asking for Equality Vodka everywhere. Join Equality Vodka on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. One voice, one vodka, Equality Vodka. Every single bottle of Equality Vodka purchased results in a donation to a recognized nonprofit organization advancing the equality movement for the LGBT community. For more information, visit equalityvodka.com. And in our equality update, uh, this is really interesting. Uh, there's a Texas judge, Judge James De Piazza in Denton County. He has written a document that must be signed by brides and grooms-to-be acknowledging his opposition to, say, to gay marriage. It says, Judge De Piazza prefers to not, in capital letters, conduct same-sex ceremonies but will not decline anyone who chooses to schedule with him, says the form, which bears two blank lines for the couples to sign. While we may not necessarily agree with, we acknowledge Judge De Piazza's position that he prefers not to conduct same-sex marriage and agree not to address the topic of same-sex marriages with Judge De Piazza before, during, or after the ceremony. He said, it's to let them know where I stand. I want to know what, that if I was getting married, there are some couples of the same sex who don't want to be married by someone who doesn't believe in same-sex marriage. It's the weirdest way to abide by the legal law and still make it as horribly uncomfortable as possible. Well, you know what? I'd like to act actually uh, I don't know I think it'd be fun just to fuck with him go get married and just make out during the whole ceremony and you know not discuss gay marriage at all just say you know the I do's but just real be real inappropriate groping well it sounds like he's gotten real social media savvy because he's not going to mention anything about it during the ceremony because he said something about not wanting people to be able to pull clips out of it and make it look like he said or supported something that he does not say or support like, I, honestly, there's part of me that's like, if I lived here, I would make him, I would make him do it. I think it would be fun. I mean, you don't know? ruin your wedding, you but know, if you're but in well, Denton County and you want to screw with somebody, check out Judge James Day Piazza. Yeah, y'all go. You know, if, you're, if you've been married for like, you know, Marcus and Bill for 22 years, really married, and you're just going to get legally, you might want to go fuck with this man. Yes! Just for fun. Well, Missouri County had a most ridiculous thing happen this week. Uh, elected officials in Dent County, Missouri, were so upset over the marriage equality decision that they voted to lower flags just just below half staff on the 26th, the anniversary date, of each month for the next year on the county courthouse where marriage licenses are issued in a public show of mourning. I love this because it's like it's worse than a death of a president. Yes. It's got to be below lower, half staff. Lower. Than the proposal half. said, may all who see these flags at these lowered positions be reminded of this despicable Supreme mm. Court travesty. Mm -hmm. We feel sadness, shame, and outright revulsion of the U.S. High Court stamp of approval of what God speaks of as an abomination. However, the response was so immediate immediately negative from all over the country and from people living in Dent County that on Tuesday, the commission would hold a special session this week to rescind the order out of respect for veterans and those currently serving in the military. So they were like, we're going to do this. Just kidding. Now we're going to do a thing where we have to not do it because that was a really dumb idea. I love the way they chose those words, sadness, shame, and outright revulsion. I mean, it's kind of like we kind of sort of felt like that for years. Shame and <laughs> 
You well, they could have gotten a third phrase that started with S for the alliteration, but if they were going to be really writerly about it. You are so right about that, Emerson. I didn't think that. What would be that word? I don't Come know. Come on, quickly, quickly. No. All right, what else? And a clerk wars continuing all oh. across the country. Uh, the continuation, another Texas clerk apparently quit in two different Kentucky counties. They've had problems. Uh, many of you probably saw the viral video of David Moore and his partner in Rowan County, uh, where clerk Kim Davis has uh, refused to issue any marriage licenses since the decision. Um, she was the one in that sweater uh, And one of the stations in Lexington WKYT said that her marriage certificate Confirms that she's been married four times But she's not interested in issuing any more licenses So the ACLU has Maybe had to Maybe she file ran out suit. on hers Well, <laughs> she's like, that's it, that's all there are Well, you know, this is interesting because I talked to you about this I called Runnels County because doing research For the rewrite of a very sordid wedding And that's the position of the JP there Is she has decided that she is not going to actually perform any ceremonies at all but then interestingly enough nobody's asked well i guess that's i guess until someone needs to get married it's not a problem but the issue is in like in counties where there are clerks where i'm not going to do it but somebody else can the right now they can get away with that but if there's only one clerk then i mean they have to be able to obtain them uh but the second kentucky clerk kfc davis is a little publicity hound uh said that he uh is refusing to grant licenses and the governor steve beshier of kentucky actually had to meet with him to say issue marriage licenses or resign well he told reporters after the meeting i can't quit i have a mortgage to pay he is asking the government to allow people to purchase marriage licenses online, removing county clerks from the process. He said he will continue to refuse to obey the governor's order and to resign his post, adding that while he is concerned about being sued or charged with official misconduct, he will lean on the Lord. Well, guess what? A lot of people tried to lean on the Lord for this Supreme Court ruling, and uh, I, the Lord didn't hold them up. It didn't. He, he, he's, he's proved that he likes us better. So that yeah, why don't they just fire his ass? That's what I don't understand. Uh, I think the... The, as we work through this newfound legal territory, um, a lot forcing people to resign uh, looks better and avoids lawsuits in the long run. Well, it, it, but but in that they're not doing their job. So it seems like to me that you're if you refuse your job in any other, if you don't, you know if you refuse to do your job at Walmart and don't put the sticky sticker on the little kid, then you might get fired. It's true. So you should call up Governor Steve Bashir and tell him that. I, I think, don't want you to just fire him. I, I think I think I'm going to start a tweet war. <laughs> 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 with who? With, I don't know. With okay. somebody. Just anybody. Just, just anybody. If you're listening, y tweet at Del Shores. He's ready just, to start a tweet war. I just want to start a tweet war. I haven't had one. I haven't had a tweet war. Uh, well, in one of the most <laughs> nutball clerk war moments, Molly Kreiner of Erion County in Texas has issued a manifesto of sorts, if you will. She, there's like four points to it, but I'm just going to read these first two. Uh, she says, I will continue to defend a natural marriage as recognized mm. by the people of Texas in the Constitution and the laws of the state of Texas, consistent with the Declaration of Independence, the written United States Constitution, the 9th, 10th, and 14th Amendments, and higher natural law. Natural law. <laughs> Number two, natural marriage between one man and one woman remains the law in Texas, regardless of any court decision to the contrary. Any court decision purporting to strike down natural marriage is unauthoritative, void, and of no force. It's like she doesn't understand the there, rules of that no. Constitution, 9th, 10th, and 14th Amendments that she's talking about in that she's, first one. She's wrong. She had several uh, other points, but let's just say she felt the need. It was like to have her own like Jerry Maguire, Texas clerk moment. Like, I have written a manifesto. A manifesto. Oh, these um, people. No one has tried to get married there, but openly gay former state rep Glenn Maxey said that at least one gay couple was contemplating a road trip to Erion County to request a license from her just so they could sue her. I think that's what we should do. I really force do. It. Force it. Force the issue. It. Um, all right, jump to that follow-up. Okay, well, you know, we talked about Decatur County because I was in Tennessee when this all went down where the, all three of the clerks quit, and uh, now there's a follow-up. Mike Creasy, mayor of De uh, De Counter, uh, Decatur County, uh, has has uh, issued a statement that although I strongly disagree with the Supreme Court's decision, I, as an elected official, must set aside my personal beliefs and follow the law. Okay, someone's getting it. Mr. Jack Martin is now the Decatur County's clerk. So they did get, the, everybody quit, they're yep. gone, and they have replaced him. Mr. Martin has taken the oath of office. He's including affirming his obligation and willingness to follow the law, whether he personally agrees with the law or not. So there we have it. Yes, I bet they spent several days listening to that Beyonce Irreplaceable song, thinking that they were. It turns out they are not. So their job love, opening openings over at Walmart. I told them that last week. Go. I love all these people who say things, although I strongly disagree. I feel like the subtext of all these people's press releases is begrudgingly. I'd like I'm to say, doing this 
begrudgingly. And if they say that, do, you know, they say, oh, I strongly disagree. I am strongly disagreeing, but I'm doing my job. Well, tough shit, asshole. You know, we don't need to hear it. We really don't. We heard it for many, many years. So now you have to do your job. I mean, well, I mean, I do think they get to say I disagree. They when I disagree say with court no, they decisions. Could say it, but then they get our mouths back. Well, d- always. That Twitter war you're trying to start, you guys at Del Shores. In fact, I'd like to start it with um, Gail, who was the one on Decatur County who quit. I want Gail to tweet me. I, I, f- I feel like it's not super likely that Gail is on the you don't Twitter. Think she's, and she's probably not listening to us right probably now. Probably not. Chances are not good. All right, All right let's flash to the gay on, news. Yeah. Um, Boy Scouts have made another step to catch up to the Girl Scouts in treating uh, Scouts and leaders equally. A key leadership panel of the Boy Scouts of America voted unanimously last week to end the ban on gay leaders in scouting. Uh, it is not officially a policy yet. There's a vote of the full executive board uh, July the 27th, at which point the change will be effective immediately. Now, it's good and it's still room to grow. It does not require councils or troops to allow out gay leaders, but lifts the ban on them. Mm. Meaning uh, that the resolution affirms the right of each chartering organization to reach its own religious and moral conclusion about the specific meaning and application of the organs and organization's values. Essentially, troops that are sponsored by churches can still not allow them if they choose to, uh, but churches that have leaders they want to participate uh, can make that decision. Uh, they have said they will defend to the fullest extent allowed by the law any group that is religious group uh, that is challenged in court for making a good faith refusal to select a unit leader based upon the religious principles. So they're still trying to walk that line between the middle that like 70% of Boy Scout troops are sponsored by a religious organization. So it allows troops that have leaders that they want to have them, uh, but that still essentially it's progress means, though. That's yes. what we have to celebrate. And you've you've been following the Boy Scouts since we've been doing this show because you were one and you, you it I made was. a big difference in your life. So Flash and You're the man you are today, Emerson. Yes, this no, is a that's crazy. Not, let's not get crazy. Okay. <laughs> this is a crazy story. We talked about this in our personal lives. This is a gay extortion trial. I'm going to just, uh, before I, I, I read this story, I want you all to know I am going to mispronounce every single name in it because they're they're all from some other country. And I, you know, if it's not some redneck name, it's hard for me. So Teofel Brank, better known by his gnome de porn, uh, Jarek Wentworth, blackmailed Florida business tycoon. Donald Burns out of $500,000 an Audi R8 sports car by threatening to expose lurid details of their relationship. Um, the Sean Cody star then tried to snatch another million. I love what you that you wrote, snatch. I did, uh, and I copied that from the website. So somebody was clever, uh-huh. as well as Burns' condo. He says, he, he, he wrote, and he wrote this, he's, the stupid thing is he put it in writing. I'm going to bite hard. I want a new car, motorcycle, and both hands full of cash. He wrote this in a text. Burns then contacted the FBI, who in turn set up a sting operation. They met him at Starbucks near LAX, handed the title of the Audi over, and the agent told Brank that the money was in the trunk of the car, which led to his arrest, and federal agents found a loaded revolver also in the car. And through the trial, crazy trial, I mean, I'm I'm saying this is like like a lifetime movie, uh, you know, gone awry. Uh, Burns had offered Sean Cody filmmakers the use of his his residence estate in La Jolla. It's been seen in commercials for Visa and Calvin Klein for only $10. The businessman also offered Brank a 22000 pimping fee if he delivered on a list of 11 Sean Cody models. That's $2,000 a model. That's it's it, yeah it's 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 oh it's I'm telling you this story. He, here's his quote: "It was a way to have sexual contact without commitment." Well, there are other ways to do that, and I had the resources to do it. He said on the stand he reportedly paid twenty five hundred for each sexual encounter. Escort Justin Griggs' testimony featured tales of jetting off to private homes in Nantucket and Palm Beach, group sex sessions with porn stars, envelopes stuffed with cash. Griggs, however, was reluctant to testify at first out of fear of a very powerful individual. This is where it gets real interesting. Should I give you the name of the person? Uh, Grig asked Brank's attorney. And uh, he said, yes, you shall. He goes, David Geffen. After two hours of deliberation, the jury found Brank guilty of six charges, including extortion, attempted extortion, and he faces up to 53 years in prison. 
So there you go. Well, here, first of all, I'd watch this Lifetime movie. I'd I watch would. the crap out of it. But also, like the moral of the story is, if you're gonna blackmail somebody, don't get greedy. Well, don't get greedy, and if you're gonna if you're gonna do anything, don't put it in writing. All it right? has to be on the phone. I mean, and make sure they're not recording it. Like, sir, half a million dollars seems like you were you were set for a you little bit. If okay. you couldn't figure out what to do with yourself while you spent half a million dollars, he's like, I just want more. And and and, and it looked like he could continue to work as a pimp. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It seemed like that job could just continue if he just. You're right. I guess. Well, greed, it seems that, well, greed, it seems that all came because they had a falling out, and I guess the money tree was drying up. And he was like, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get me, I'm gonna get mine." I was wondering. Now, do you think? I love that the businessman didn't uh, didn't go to the FBI until we passed half a million. Like up to that, it was like okay. Fine. And he didn't want to ruin his reputation. Well, well I guess, guess what? That, that makes sense. Oh, but I, hey, you, if he wants to invest it, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think we can no. take that money. Uh-uh. <gasps> All right, what All else, right, Jim? flashing on. I love this story. Over the 4th of July weekend, a lifeguard at Carolina Beach in North Carolina added to the 4th of July festivities by flying a rainbow flag at a lifeguard tower. Lifeguard Zach Hupp said, pretty much immediately someone complained, told one of the other lifeguards that they thought because I was flying that flag that I would only rescue gay people. Oh, please. Dear Beach Go- I mean, those people shouldn't be getting in the water because you're clearly too dumb to, know, to swim. They, they shouldn't even be getting out of the house. I mean, I feel like, <laughs> like, should not ask like that is uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm sorry that you should probably have a minder with you at all times. He said, I feel like with that flag, I would hope that everyone would feel welcome to come down to the beach, especially near Freeman Park, which is filled with other flags that may turn some people away. However, the town went so far as to amend official policy to be more specific on which flags are permitted to fly. Because it's also like the flags are also supposed to be out weather conditions and things like that. There's real official stuff. But still, I can't get over like that someone went running to the lifeguard stand and said, I see how this conversation went down. Like, what do I need to do? Do I need to, like, flail my wrists extra to make sure that if I'm drowning, you think I'm gay and you come rescue me? Help! You just have to re- yell it in a real high voice. Help! I'm drowning! And I think... That and then you, they know. Well, and, and you put, you know, you said weather conditions. You put up a, a gay flag. You, you go, okay, it is sunny and grab your speedo. Yes. All right. Um, also over the weekend, uh, in uh, exciting nerd news, Comic-Con happened in San Diego where they roll out all of the trailers of exciting new big blockbuster movies and do panels on all kinds of TV shows. Well, on the very first day of Comic-Con, during the panel for Con Man, in front of the whole festival, makeup artist Barry Bishop surprised his boyfriend, Billy Brooks, who did the visual effects for the show by asking him to marry him. He got down on one knee in front of the entire panel, all of the stars, and 7,000 people, and asked him to marry him. They are the most adorable big bear couple and they got a rousing standing ovation Aww. and they talked about how they were born and raised in the deep south and now they can go home to the carolinas and get married oh i just, love it just don't take it. a rainbow flag to freeman park at the beach y'all i'm uh, the bears i'm gonna go to i'm gonna be at timberfell lodge on sorted lives weekend y'all come over there these boys i bet they i bet they know about it flashing on all right this i Love this story so much. Uh, Scott and uh, Chris Lindsay got married at the W. Dallas Victory Hotel last week. We've been to parties there. And they just finished saying their vows when the officials started playing a video message from Jennifer Hudson. Now, at this point, you know everybody's feigning just at the video message. And then at the conclusion of the video Jennifer Hudson popped out from a curtain behind the altar and broke into a live version of her song, I Still Love You, from her latest album, J. Hud. Hudson said, I'm very connected to the gay community, and it's something I'm passionate about, discussing the turn it up for change HRC efforts last year. The W Dallas Victory staff began making plans for Hudson to crash the Lindsay's nuptial after the Supreme Court decision. I just love that. Well, story. and I have to say, because when you watch the video, it's like there's this cute message. She's like, I'm so sorry I couldn't be there. And then like this white curtain falls, and there she is with two backup dancers. These two gentlemen, I'd, on their big day, and you're already emotional, they were so much more con- know, contained than I would have been in that moment. No, I would have just been, I, you know, even at my age, I would think I'd have been screaming and Oh my god, oh my god. Yes. Uh skip this. Next. Oh, okay. Okay. Follow up. All right. Okay. We got uh, a Cleveland fire uh, fighter who had a homi- homophobic rant. Uh, we we did this story, and Guy Esther, uh, Esther Gall, a 26-year-old Cleveland firefighting veteran, looked at the Humans of New York photo of the gay kid and commented, this kid needs psychiatric hip help. He's delusional. We need to find a cure for this kind. 
Other commentators disagreed. He claimed that the overwhelming majority of pedophiles are gay. You're mentally ill, just like the kid and the rest of the homosexuals and their supporters. So then the Cleveland Fire Department launched an investigation to determine if Estergall's comments violated the department's social media policy. And according to spokesman Gary Gray, this type of action, these types of statements are unacceptable and we will not tolerate things like this. But uh, Esther Howe then said it did not affect his work. And he, his statement was, do you think I'd go into a fire and say, excuse me, what's your sexual orientation? Seriously, I couldn't care less about someone's sexual orientation. It means about as much to me as someone's eye color or whether or not they have five fingers on their left hand. It means the same to me when I'm at work. Well, then why did you comment? Right. Why did you comment this hate? I love Larry Gray, the spokesperson, though, who said that the, we will not tolerate things like this. I love that the uh, fish that the Cleveland Fire Department like really Please got it. on and said, hey, we're really going to look at this and take this seriously because it reflects on us. Um, and another exciting news. Uh Obergefell, uh, our uh, hero of the marriage equality uh, victory at the Supreme Court, it uh, turns out that 20th Century Fox has secured the rights to make a movie about his case. Uh, being produced by Wick Godfrey and Marty Bowen, the duo known for producing The Twilight Saga, The Maze Runner, and The Faults in Our Stars, are really big uh, movies, and they want to focus specifically on Jim and how he and his terminally ill partner, John Arthur, flew to Maryland to get married back in 2013 and the fight. So I love that they're going to tell the story using them as the through line on the marriage equality victory. It's so exciting. He's been wonderfully eloquent uh, in his response to the decisions, and it's great uh, when a really great person becomes the focal point. It's like Edie Windsor, and J Jim is just like that, too. So that's really exciting I was uh, casting in my head. I was going, I wonder who's going to play him. Who'd you know? come up with? Well, I thought of Tom Hanks immediately, but then I was wondering, is he too old? I, I was, And then he's done. Yeah, I don't know. Also, he don't look anything like him. I know, but that doesn't matter anymore. It does. <laughs> so if you're going to play a real person, you should look remotely close to to them. No, I guess so. Just because okay, he's else? not super famous. He is now. But who else? Well, I don't Do know. You know. I didn't say that I had casting. You did. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is my life, guys. Emerson Collins. I ask him a question. He's just an asshole. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to think that. Oh, that was weird. That was out loud. <laughs> just in his out loud voice. This is um, all, right, all right, what else? Oh, I love this. I do too. This is a great story. Um, in 1979, uh, Dwayne Schrock Jr. sent his uh, Father's Day card, and it got lost in the mail to his dad. 26 years later, just after Father's Day, his dad received it in the mail. 87-year-old Dwayne Schrock Sr. said, Somebody picked up the ball and carried it, and after all these years, they must have still forwarded it. it I still kind of tear up when I think about it. The card has evidently been returned to sender and forwarded on several occasions. Schrock said he's moved all around the country in the intervening years. Dwayne Schrock Jr. died of AIDS in 1995, and Sr. explained that the relationship had been strained when Dwayne was alive because he struggled to accept his son's homosexuality. It's hard to read this without getting emotional. The uh, card said, Dear Dad, we, have been, we haven't been in touch for a while. I'm doing fine, and I'm very happy in Richmond. I'd like to hear from you. Have a happy Father's Day. Love, Dwayne. Uh, senior said it was like a sign from heaven that his son is doing just fine. <laughs> It's so beautiful, but it's it, also so tragic. It's sort of a mm. great reminder of, you know, people that have strained relationships, parents that are having a hard time accepting or having a hard time uh, dealing with the situation to realize, you know, you don't have forever and you don't know how long you have. When you sit for days or weeks or months or years in that place of like it's strained and uncomfortable, uh, you don't know when you'll have the opportunity to resolve it. So uh, I hope that it and gives I, people I bet he wishes lesson. he has that time back. I mean, you know, that's what I loved about the book Prayers for Bobby because it was really the evolution of Mary. Griffiths after her son committed suicide and he wrote all and she found his diary and she realized his pain and then she changed and then she tried to make a difference and she did make a difference but uh, but it was too late for she and her son. All right. Well, in our uh, brand new segment, Trans Cetera, to remind us all that uh, as a part of the LGBT community, uh, we need to all be working and focused on uh, the equality issues that face our trans brothers and sisters. Uh, Defense Secretary Ash Carter ordered a six-month review of what he called the outdated ban on transgender military service. He said, The Defense Department's current regulations regarding transgender service members are outdated and are causing uncertainty that distracts commanders from our core missions. We have transgender soldiers sailors, airmen, and marines, real patriotic Americans, who I know are being hurt by an outdated, confusing, inconsistent approach that's contrary to our value of service and individual merit. 
Carter said in a statement that the group will start with the presumption that transgender persons can serve openly without adverse impact on military effectiveness and readiness unless and except where objective practical impediments are identified. And what's important about that is that they're starting not from mm. is it possible, but starting this review from the perspective of it is possible. So what do we need to do to ensure that it's being done in the best way possible? Yeah, and it's outdated. I love that. So. And, and we've got we've got uh, also just really quickly. Uh, I am Kate is premiering July the twenty sixth on E eight episodes. So set your DVRs. I am today before I go on this trip. Well, you don't talk about her. She's getting that Arthur Ashe ESPY award uh, tonight. So I'll be actually watching a special uh, sports ball show. Oh, I've got to I've got to do oh, I've got to hurry and go DVR shit. Okay, all right. Well, we're, let's check in with Crazy. We had another one. Uh, with Fox host. Uh, Todd Starn spoke at a church in Augusta over the weekend, encouraging Christians to fight back against same-sex marriage and transgender equality. He began by saying it was good to be back in the South, where it was easy to find a Waffle House and Chick-fil-A restaurants, where he argued that it was the official chicken of Jesus. Comedy. That's comedy. Uh, oh, he was, you know, I watched it. He was very charming, and I talked to you about that. That's what's so well, hard about this. Lots of terrible people. People are charming. Yes, he was he, very, very... I'm charming yeah, at yes. times. <laughs> well, okay. And terrible. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm kind of proud. Here, This is his quote. I'm proud, kind of proud to call myself a gun-toting, chicken-eating, Bible-clinging son of a Baptist. I believe that the reason that God blessed America is because we know how to smoke a pork butt. I guess he failed to read those scriptures about not eating pork. Well, I also feel like if God made a list of all the reasons he was going to bless America, I hope that we know how to smoke pork butt wouldn't make the top 100. I don't think so. Um, it turned serious then, he said, uh, you know, after his little comedy routine. He goes, there is a war on religious liberty in the United States of America, and this war is not targeting people of the Muslim faith or the Jewish faith or the Hindu faith. This war on religious liberty is targeting people of the Christian faith. We are on the verge of having our faith criminalized. Then he mentioned Miley Cyrus and her twerking and committing this act of public debauchery. In a matter of moments, she implemented that word into the national lexicon. And then it was about that time that Phil Robertson, one of my heroes of the faith from Duck Dynasty, did an interview with GQ magazine. And in that interview, Phil Robertson defended traditional marriage. Miley Cyrus celebrated for her act of debauchery, but Phil Robertson castigated for his standing up for the Bible. He quoted his own book, I sort of feel like a Duck Dynasty guy living in a Miley Cyrus world. I believe we are just a few short years away from the government imposing their will on Christian churches. Well... Oh. Well, it's funny because I mean, it's I s exhausting reading this shit. I sort of get that though, because there's places I've been in the South where I felt like a Miley Cyrus boy living in a Duck Dynasty world. So yes. I mean, I can relate from opposite ends of the spectrum. I also love that he thinks Miley Cyrus introduced twerking to the national yes. lexicon as demonstrating a little bit of his white privilege. I also find it funny that twerking is some act of debauchery, as though like there is any way in which you can vibrate or move your body that is somehow debaucherous. It's it, you know he went on he he gave uh, sweet cakes a shout out he reinforced trend traditional gender roles there that there is no such thing as male or female that you may wait may wake up feeling like a boy by third period you may not you may start feeling like a girl. It just all was just gibberish in a way. Um, but then he said the time has come for all of us to stand together with one voice this. They may demand to know the content of our prayers. They may try to shut down our bakeries. They may try to silence our voices, but we will not be silenced. We will not be intimidated. Good. Don't be silenced. We just won't listen. It's interesting, you know, said people that, that when people bring up this argument of like we're not targeting Muslims or Jewish or you know why? Because there are not enough Muslims in our country to attempt to enshrine uh, Muslim theology into legislation. Mm -hmm. That's the difference, sir. There you go. And that should be real obvious. Uh, if they were, I guarantee you that Todd Starnes and his crowd would be the ones yelling the loudest that we can't have Muslim philosophy as the governing law of our land. So it's convenient that what they don't want really is equal treatment. They want special treatment because they had it for so long. There you go. And it's finally, what's gay in sports ball? We talked last weekend about the Women's World Cup victory. Megan Rapinoe is one of the stars of the winning Women's World Cup team. And on Sports Center, she was asked to define herself in one word. And I just love this. She took a little whiteboard and had a marker, and she wrote, gay, with a smiley face. Aww. I just love that.
All right, well, we have an incredibly special guest today. Uh, Blake McIver as featured regularly here uh, on the show with The Gay View and, of course, my People's Couch co-star. He has written a marriage equality anthem that is a beautiful uh, song about how important it is for us to be able to state through the ceremony and through the rings uh, that our love and our relationships are equal, but also looking to the future, such a reminder that the rings and the ceremony are really just the beginning of the journey in a relationship with people. It's such a beautiful uh, song and wonderful uh, lyrical writing in the journey in this a sort of a I love country it. pop feel uh, and that great storytelling that uh, so many country songwriters uh, do uh, that is such a great uh, answer to so many of the bigots. It's beautiful and it's simple and so we're going to let you watch the video right now and you uh, might recognize a couple of people in it. I mean there might be some really important cameos that you should pay attention to. Just saying. And after the video is done we'll be right back with Blake to talk all about it. Pulling past the signpost of this tiny weathered town The tears welled up so high inside I thought that I might drown Everything is different But it all looks the same And now you're here beside me And I'm rid of all my shame I just hope that they will see what has always been in me How much do I love you? Will they understand Everything you took for us To get those wedding bands The road ain't always pretty And home sometimes seems far With twists and turns and lessons learned But it's time for me to say This is who we are When I was a small boy I never thought there'd be That perfect happy ending For anyone like me I could read the signals Smiles and bless his hearts And I still hear the whispered words That said I'd never be apart Now I want them all to see The strength of you and me How much do I love you? Will they understand? Everything it means Sometimes seems far With twists and turns Lessons learned Growing pains and scars But it's time for me to say This is who we are The day I stood before you And I made that vow It wasn't just a promise For the hero are just the start of all that we can be And I want the world to see Because that's how much I love you We both understand That now our world is so much more Than just two wedding bands The road ain't always pretty My home is where you Twists and turns and lessons are learned And healing all our scars And I stand with you today Proud of who we are I'm proud of who we This is who we are. And 
everyone. That is This Is Who We Are, Marriage Equality Anthem by Blake McIver. It is available Yay. for purchase on iTunes right now. Uh, and you can watch it on YouTube. And yes, Blake is in the house. Hi, Blake. Hey. Welcome, Blake. Hey. hey, guys. I love this video so much, not just because I'm in it. <laughs> I really, I, I mean, you, ha you, you know I'm sincere because I, I, you sent me this song before anybody heard it. Right, it, before but, anyone heard you know, it. A few people yeah. had heard it. And it touched my heart. Just loved it. Oh, am I not Let on camera Dale's anymore? out of the shot. Oh, well, uh -oh. shit. Oh, no, Let's get you me have back. to get in your well, shot. Well, this, this thing during the commercial, it just was like, you know, a bad erection. It just started oh, going down. It went a little limp. Yes, it did. So, but I love it. And I love, and it's gone crazy viral. It's, it's going. Like, yeah. It's on its way. It's like, yeah, it's been it's jumping. It's almost 41,000 views in the first uh, 24 hours and been That's picked up by ridiculous. the Huffington Post, Gay Times UK. Yes. Uh, Logo TV ran it. That's so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell Being us about- Being shared all over. Tell I mean. us where it came from. Well, um, it, you know, it was inspired by uh, a couple of things. Uh, you know, uh, when you shared me the first draft of A uh, Very Sorted Wedding, uh, I was so inspired by that story. And uh, that was kind of right about the time that the Supreme Court arguments had started. And um, so I sat down and I was like, I, I, I have a story in my heart that I want to share, um, but I didn't really know how to put it into words. And putting it into music and lyrics seemed like a better way uh, for me to express uh, this sort of journey and story. And uh, sat down and wrote it uh, kind of in an afternoon. It only took a few hours to to write the song and then we did a few you got all those rhymes that quick <laughs> well the first few i mean we we did some rewrites and did some did some cleanups but then yeah i took it to my uh producer and guitarist jimmy heberling and we went into the studio and just it's all just the two of us all all of the instruments really? he did all of the guitars and the bass and the drums and i i played the organ and percussion on it and yeah, and so that's how the song came about. Well, it's really gorgeous, and I want to. Since you mentioned a very sorted wedding, I want to ask you. Um, uh, w I'd love it to be in the in the a very sorted wedding. I want to use it in the movie. I would love that. Yeah, so. That would oh be amazing. So, oh my yeah. god, the that's so great, and it really does. It fits so well with the theme of what we're doing. And what I love most is how positive it is you know that you're so much of uh, arguing with bigots and arguing with people that diminish who we are and our relationships ends up being a confrontational thing and it it's hard to watch this celebration uh, that you have uh, chosen to approach it with and not see the love is love. Well, I've gotten some ama amazing outpouring from, you know, straight allies saying that we love this song and we identify with the love story in this song just as much as uh, an LGBT person would. Well, I uh, told Emerson when I, because I, I, you know, I've been obsessed with uh, posting it and also following uh, the threads. And I noticed like there's this, a couple of people push the don't like. I said, you know what? <laughs> you would have to be an asshole. You would have to be a complete and utter asshole to push. I, I don't know how you can watch that video and not have some sort of sentiment. I mean, YouTube brings out the crazies, but it means we're doing something I know, right. I, I was waiting for the resistance them. because I was a little bit concerned because the first string of comments were so lovely and so emotional. I was like, uh. <laughs> but it's also. It, but it hasn't been that many. No, I mean, it really, it really has not. It really well, has. and it's great because you can drown out the trolls with love. And if you're listening, make sure that you go uh, to YouTube, uh, watch the video, and when you enjoy it, not if, when you <laughs> enjoy it. Um, and even if you just watched it here on the show, please go to YouTube. Those views count. Uh, and there's yes. all sorts of different ways for you to share it. Share the video on your Facebook page, on your Twitter, uh, send it out in an email. Uh, and if you have a YouTube account, write a comment because we can drown out the bigots uh, with totally. phrases of love. Every com every positive comment matters. Every little thumbs up like matters. Um, and also, the con this sort of country pop feel is a little different for you. What inspired that? It is new. Um, and yeah, and I, I sort of wrote the story out on the YouTube video about this. Um, it's it's sort of an in, in homage to my grandfather. Uh, his favorite kind of music was country music. Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to country music. He was a Texan through and through. Um, actually grew up in Winters, Texas. Are you? Um, oh, my yes, grandfather. Yeah, both my grandparents. They actually got married Full in circle. Winters. Full circle. Full moment. circle. <laughs> it's totally. Wow. Wow. And he was, you know, he was uh, an amazing man, but also we d differed on a lot of issues. But, um, you know, he, he always encouraged me to think for myself, to be exactly who I am and to ask questions and to not just take anything for uh, for face value. Um, so How long I'm, did he live in Winners? Uh, he lived in Winners until uh, he until he started in uh, World War Two. He was a test pilot and trainer in, in World War Two and they got married and then moved to Houston. I bet some of my family knew him. 
Probably we, it's a small. We town. own the white trash side of town. <laughs> that was our town. They were off the other end. <laughs> yeah. <of> <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> there was no other end. Emerson, I don't think there is another end there. in you winters. Have not been there. I think it's very equal. <laughs> it's it's pretty equal. <laughs> but well, congratulations. We are thank so you. proud of this. We're proud to be involved. Well, with and thank it. you both for being in the yeah. video. Hello. Oh, what? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> um, oh, really? Oh, I that... love that last shot of Emerson just with that flag. I was like that. I said we need to get that on one of those little where you send it where it's like. Like a, a, a GIF. Yes. A, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, it is my, it is, I'm a flag it. Yeah. I'm <laughs> a just proud, a proud flag, a flag it. it. It is the gayest thing I've ever done on oh, a film. Oh, please. Hashtag, so, what what have the, I the done gay- on film that's gayer than that? Oh. I mean, running with a pride flag is pretty, I mean, that's pretty up there. And I you were giving even gayer than like fake masturbating in sissies. I think this is gayer than that. Walking out on stage with all those men and sort of lives a series. That, that's that, just that's walking around gay. naked. That's pretty gay, though. It's not gay until, no, it's not. No, it's not I, just standing okay, there naked. Okay, okay, Emerson, I agree with you. It is the gayest thing that I, I, I am now challenged to write you something gayer. And is oh, it the, he cannot, lower. Yeah, he is it the straightest thing you've done on film in it, recent it, years? It, well, in recent <laughs> years, yes. I mean, it was. You're so angry. I was. I was very. Yeah, I was very giving angry. you like mask for mask, bro. Pensive. I know. I looked at it and I thought, ooh, I'm a little too angry there. I was. I was judging my my tiny <laughs> performance. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> your performance was perfect. <laughs> Y'all also need to know that we were picking out Dell's clothes. He's bringing out. We're sitting at the at our office at his house, and he's bringing out shirts. Going now, does this look? Straight? Does this? I look didn't straight? have anything. I was like, it no, that like, plaid, that plaid. It totally good. works. It's, it's totally, totally bro, worked. dude. Yeah, it was, but it was a, it was a fun day. Hot as hell that day. Oh, hot just, as hell. We, where were we? In Agua Dulce. It was so hot. <laughs> it was just before Hades turned left, it and was, it's right there. And it, you, it finally cooled down at the end of the day. Well, and how did that location come about? Um, well, our amazing director, Mark Sayer, uh, he wanted to make this video and wanted to make this for us, and he he donated all of his time and all of his resources. He found the location the crew the crew donated all of their time and all of their talents to make this happen just because they believed in the message and believed in the song um so it was a huge labor of love for the entire crew and and they uh, made it happen and what did the woman that owned the house say oh she just uh, that when uh mark pitched her the song she was like oh well i totally believe in this message and you guys can use the house and the ranch and the horses and all of it for free and she's actually uh in the video sitting in the in the wedding a scene at the end oh she was sweet she was sweet sweet. well real quick we don't have a lot of time but i i i know that a lot of our listeners don't know this some do that you you were a child star i mean you started when what what was your first job six uh star search i won star search at six years old that was sort of the like launch pad and and then full house Mm -hmm. you were michelle's little buddy on full full house and then a little rascals how does it feel this whole journey that you've taken where you are right now well it's the, right now is the most exciting for me because I feel like with a song like this and a message like this uh, this is the most authentically who I am and to be able to share that with the world and not uh, really not be playing a character really just sh- sharing my music that so organically came from inside of me it's it's a really great feeling well good I, I love I love that I love your journey I love everything about what you're doing with that platform right now and you guys are got another season of of oh okay never and so if you are enjoying all of Blake McIver's <laughs> music you can go and check out his YouTube channel it is yes. Blake McIver uh, there and share the video and it's really important you know if you guys remember two years ago Steve Graham put out one music video and just our community uh, turned him into a superstar overnight uh, with one perfect video and we, as we sit in this moment and we talk about these clerk wars and all of the bigots out there that are continuing to fight in response to our equality it really is messages like this one that you've crafted so beautifully in this video so Take a moment, spend your 99 cents, go to iTunes and download the song, go to YouTube and share the video on your f- Facebook page with your friends, whether you are LGBT or just an ally. Uh, it's a beautiful message. Of and a why. lot of people uh, forget that uh, uh, when you're on iTunes and when you purchase the song, uh, every review and every star actually matters a lot in the metrics of, of getting LGBT artists to the forefront. And it will actually, if, if this single does well, it will link other, it will link to other LGBT artists out there, such as Levi Kreis and Eric Hyman. And it's just, it's good for everybody. So don't forget to... Comment. Well, I have a feeling that this song is going to be sung at a lot of weddings. I hope so. Yeah. That is my hope. Yeah. Get me, you'll so. get to sing it. <laughs> People can book you to come sing it at their wedding. Exactly. Yes. And, and book the preacher to preach. Yes. yes. I can we can do, oh, cool. do the ceremony. Oh, we Blake can. can be the entertainment and I'll be the flag it. Oh, I'm oh, seeing a Kickstarter oh, prize. There's a campaign. <laughs> there's a campaign in there. <laughs> I could be the flower girl. <laughs> yes. In this, in but this with situation. The flag. Yes. yes. But oh, with the flag. It's a package deal. You can book all three. Just of get everybody. <laughs>
Um, do you have show, is Alabama include shows for I you? do. They're doing Sorted Lives at uh, the terrific new theater. I love this theater. If I'm not mistaken, it is the only theater in the country that has done every one of my plays. Wow. And so I, a couple of years ago, I said, anytime you want to benefit, I will come in and give you a complete free performance to benefit this theater that continues to do a lot of work. And Louise Beard, of course, introduced me to Carl Stewart, who is directing Sorted Lives. They're doing Sorted Lives on the 25th, and I will be in the audience and doing a Q&A after. And then the 26th, I'm doing my benefit for them. Uh, you know, singularly sorted, my little stand-up routine. Yes. So it's it's all a, a lot of fun. And then after that, I will be going to San Francisco to another theater for a benefit. Woo so the nice. conservatory who does my work as well. And we'll be in Dallas and Fort Worth this weekend. And so Lord yeah, knows we'll be out on the town at some point. So come out and find us and say, hey, girl, hey. <laughs> you can find all of Blake's stuff at Blake McIver. Yes, it's all across social media at Blake McIver or my Facebook page, Blake McIver Official. And this Sunday at Rockwell Table and Stage, I will be performing live. We're doing our gospel brunch. At Yay! So yes. check it out. Oh, I hate I'm missing that. Yeah, right, we'll do another one. It's next mimosas week. and gospel music. If you're here in LA, go to uh, Rockwell Table and Stage Online and get your tickets now. Uber over and get a little drunk mm-hmm. while you're listening about Jesus. And praise Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, that's all we got. Well, thank you so much for listening to us today. We're out of here. We will see you next week. Up next is Tony Sweet and then Jasper Cole and then the amazing Ann Walker with Blake McGuire. We're back. back. <laughs> A so. full day of fun at UBN Radio. Yes. Thanks for listening, you guys. Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBN Radio.